Hello, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to uh, the uh, Boxer Shorts and Cumulo briefing. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Thank you for coming and good morning. Um, my name uh, is Mark Risby. I'm the CTO at Boxer. Um, I know many of the people on the call by the look of it. Um, so thank you uh, for joining us. Um, this is part of a series of events that we've been doing um, over the last few months uh, by the name of, we call it Boxer Shorts. It's an old cheesy name from our past, but we really wanted to um, focus on bite-sized bits of information. Um, the idea was that uh, everybody's really, really busy. And if we could curate some content, you know, in 20 minute um, chunks uh, and share that with you and share that you know, with our customers, um, and then perhaps take that, if there's anything that sparks your interest, then we'll come back in, or we'll usually come back in uh, and have a meeting and take you into the depths. Um, so the point of people not having much time and only having uh, 20 minute slots, well, most of us seem to have a lot more time on our hands all of a sudden. And the idea of coming in to see you afterwards, well, that's gone out of the window as well. So the purpose still roughly remains the same. And the idea is to give you a flavor of a certain part of a product. Um, and uh, then we'll follow up later on. If this is something that interests you, uh, contact your account manager uh, on the boxer side. And what we'll do is we'll create something for you. And now we'll do a web call or a demo and we'll make it specific to what you and your teams want to see. So um, uh, yeah, just let us know and we'll make that happen. Cumulo, what are we going to talk about? So Cumulo um, has been a partner of ours uh, for I don't know, around about a year now. Um, we came to them through old relationships, some people moving around through different uh, companies that we've, uh, we've partnered with in the past. And we immediately liked what they had. Um, there are a million storage options out there. And uh, you know, we've often said if we could actually see a storage vendor every day of the week and probably still have some left at the end. So to find something that's actually interesting and offers something unique has been quite difficult. So what Cumulo brought uh, was a, a completely different type of storage and a different offering, very much more software focused um, with um, great hardware in the background, but focusing on the sort of storage operating system, if you like, and doing some things that we hadn't seen possible before. So on the, the first look, it's a scale out um, NAS. We can scale for capacity and we can scale for performance. And um, we've seen that kind of thing before. But what really interested us very quickly was how the software enabled them and the operating system enabled them to do things we hadn't seen. So one of the first, um, one of the first things we noticed was to be able to work on-prem, in the cloud, or as a hybrid set of storage. We've never seen anything quite like that. It's agnostic about where that software runs. So it enables you to do things that just weren't possible before. And being very software based, um, we could see so many things um, that, that again, we hadn't seen in other bits of software, um, other, other storage. So for example, um, Cumulo would let you use real time analytics to see what's going on with your data, see where network hotspots are, see where storage performance and bottlenecks can be in real time. Most software, uh, most uh, hardware-based systems don't allow you to do that. It could take a day or two days to tree walk a file system to find out what's going on. Here, you can look at it live and reprovision um, your resources you know, immediately. Never seen anything like that. And if you ever administered a large storage system before and you come and look under the hood of Accumulo, I can tell you, you will be amazed because everyone who really understands that you know, always is surprised. And because it's software and it's a SaaS model, so basically um, the storage is, is almost the software is done as a subscription, you get all the features of the software. There aren't you know, 13 different versions you buy. You get one version that has all of the options in for synchronization, for multi-site, for everything is dealt with in, in, you know, in one package. So there's the licensing is so much simpler than we've seen with other systems. And because of the way the software is run and because of the way Cumulo developed, they, they, they run agile, um, sprints and that they're bringing new versions to the market every few weeks. A really high percentage of people stay upgrading, stay on the latest version because the system is very quick to enable a new version to run. And the advantages there is there's continual improvements that have shown um, you know, new features, but also performance as they've gone through. I've never seen a, a system before that as the software has been updated, the actual performance, the raw performance of the cluster improves and there's been some quite significant improvements over that time um, which Cumulo um, publish and, and allow you to look at in uh, you know in, in some nice charts um, of real uh, real world data so again that's something that we can 
um, we can uh, show you individually, but it's an incredibly interesting system that enables an awful lot. So that's it from me. I just wanted to give you a little perspective about why we're here and, and, and what, you know, what Cumulo is about. Why we're doing this particular demo is to talk a bit more about cloud and remote access. So this is um, very timely. Uh, it wasn't designed that way, but remote editing is something that now we're obviously really starting to see um, you know, a, a great deal of interest in. And there's some partnerships here using um, Adobe software and Teradici um, clients to enable us to sort of activate some new workflows um, using the Cumulo um, system. Um, so what I'm gonna do is hand over um, to Ian Marcroft, who's the senior systems engineer um, in the UK um, for Cumulo, who's our local man on the street, um, who'll take you through um, a few more slides and then straight into a demo. So thank you very much, Ian. Yeah, great, Mark. Thanks very much. Are you going to move the slides on for me? Or do I, I will do it. And also, um, I will just um, say we do have a Q&A uh, slot available at the end. If we run over time, people may have a little bit more time than normal. We will, uh, we will take questions. Just poke them straight in uh, to the, uh, the, the panel that you have there, uh, and I'll take care of those later on. Okay, perfect. Yes, yeah, so if you can just move the slides on for me. Yeah. So great introduction. Thanks very much, uh, Mark, for that. Um, absolutely, we are a, a software product um, designed to be a software product and not um, hardware appliance. Um, we've got some great, um, as it's en enterprise ready features that are part of the product and as Mark um, articulated really well, everything that, uh, that is in the product you get as part of your software subscription. And we're a, we're a scale out NAS product that's uh, multi-protocol aware. You can read and write over different protocols direct to the same file set. And we've got some really great inbuilt analytics. I'm not going to dwell too long on this slide, but uh, fair to say that, you know, our, the, the way that our real-time analytics work is that we, we tag metadata within the file system to allow us to look real time into that file system as to what's going on with all those clients. So jump to the next one, Mark, please. So the, the architecture we're going to look at today, um, I say we are a software product that sits on top of some hardware. Um, in this example that we're going to be showing you today, it's we're running this on, on e, Amazon EC2 instances um, with, with EBS um, disks on the back end of that. So typically we've got two flavors of, of EBS that we can run. We can run as an all flash node. So that consists of, of, the, of a, an EBS class of SSD, or we can, um, we can spin up what we call a hybrid node. So a hybrid node is a, is a large layer of SSD backed off to hard drive type EBS blocks as well. So what we do is uh, all our writes go into that SSD layer and we do adaptive file name prefetching to maintain a, a, a large percentage of that SSD for all our hot writes as well, our hot reads rather as well. So that we're tr really trying to utilize the SSD layer to its maximum, but by um, keeping the cost of the node down by introducing what we call a, a hybrid node. And we pin all our metadata in, in SSD as well. Okay, should we jump to the next one? So, so this is just gives you an overview of what we're gonna be showing you today. So um, we'll be building um, a, a Teradici client, um, in, the, in our case, it will be a Windows client. Um, and we'll also use a CloudFormation template to build a Cumulo cluster. Um, we'll start up, we'll just build a, an entry level four node cluster. We'll connect, um, we'll, we'll create a share uh, over SMB to that cluster. Um, and we'll connect into the environment using some Teradici software. So we've got a couple of options when we connect into the environment. We can either do that via what we call a zero client. So a zero client runs a Teradici chipset in it. And there are different flavors out there in the marketplace. The one we're showing here is a HP version, um, but there are different versions out there. Or we've got a software client that loads on top of a Mac or a or Windows or Linux machine. So you can connect into that environment. Typically this pipe doesn't need to be more than sort of 15K in size. So um, it, it's it's quite quite calm, kind on the on the broadband connectivity coming in. So um, if you want to stop sharing, Mark, I'll I'll jump into the demo um, without wasting any more time. Uh, 
Okay, let me just share my screen. Right, can you see my uh, Amazon instance environment? Yep, looks good. Yep, cool. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump in here straight away, uh, do a search for the Teradici client itself. Um, we can see in the marketplace here, we've got some options. We're going to select this Windows device. So I'll build out the Teradici client, gives you some ideas on costs per hour or um, uh, but depending on how you're going to run this environment. So scrolling down um, to the instance type we're going to use, we can see where it is and isn't available within this region. I'm currently running in the London region. I'm just going to choose the entry level box here. Um, you can do a search for the actual um, instance type. Uh, configure next. I'm going to run one instance of it um, and the subnet. Uh, the subnet I want to run this in is my one that's in West 2B. Make sure that your environment, the, the, the you know, the, the um, subnet that you're running it in supports the, the GPU chipset that you need. That's the biggest thing you've got to make sure you do a search for beforehand um, to make sure that, uh, as I say, it, it will support the amount of GPUs you want in that particular environment because it does vary greatly. Um, and then I'm just going to launch this out. Um, choose a uh, your key your pen file. This is going to allow you to um, set your password when it comes to running this um, instance out. Um, if you're if you know AWS, then you know how all this works anyway. So that's going to launch out, um, and typically we we jump now into our EC2 instance to view it. I'm going to leave that to run out, um, and I'm just going to do. Uh, I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to actually do a search for um, Cumulo and yeah, AWS Marketplace. So we'll just do a search for the Cumulo piece. And as you can see in here, we've got different options available. So here's the, the sort of smallest all flash option that we have. Great for testing out. And then we can do a, a 20 terabyte node, which is high performance, which is the hybrid node I spoke about. Or we can do a 30 terabyte all flash. So what we're just going to do is build a 20 terabyte hybrid node. And as I say, there are four nodes to start with. So dependent on the region, as we scroll down here, we can get some pricing options based on what instance type we use. Uh, our recommended instance type is an M5 ATX large. And then how we consume this is we look at uh, the cloud formation template. We view that and then download that CloudFormation template. So it's going to pull that template down. And then the next thing we do is jump back into our EC2 environment. Sorry, our CloudFormation environment. And we're just going to create a stack. So when I create a stack, I'm just going to use that type template that I uploaded. Um, downloads. Uh, that's the template of that's the cloud formation template I've just pulled down. Give this stack a name, doesn't really matter too much what we call that. And then here's, here's where we choose what instance type we want to use. M5 ATX large was the recommended. Obviously, the, the higher that instance type is, the faster each individual node is going to be, the more performance, so CPU and, and, and uh, memory that we're giving each node. And we can also scale this on a node by node, so we can add a node at a time to make this, this cluster more capacity and more performant as well. So we've got two ways in which we can do that. We can also change that on the fly as well. So just because we set it here quite small and slow maybe, we could change that in, in, with each instance type later on if we want to as well. So here's my SSH key pair. I'm gonna choose encrypted volumes. Um, and the, I'm going to choose my uh, network environment here, like right, VPC. Um, what, might, what am I going to call this cluster? So which I'm just going to give this a, a name as demo. Um, we, and that's obviously the name of the cluster that you will get built. I'm going to skip through some of these options. I'm, I'm not really interested in creating any stack options or notification things. So I'll, I'll skip through that and 
start creating the cluster. So I create my stack. Ah, I've already called it on something, this one already. So this is just going to run out my stack now. Um, that tends to take a couple of minutes. So what I'll do is I'll jump back into my EC2 environment. I do have a, in, in, in true um, cookery style, have one that I created earlier, which I can jump into and show you some of those analytics stuff if we get some time. But we'll see that um, uh, these, these are all running out now. So I've got a, um, an editor here. So this is my, um, the Teradici client that I created earlier. And I'm just gonna call this editor three. Um, so the, the cluster itself is gonna spin out. So the typically the next thing I would um, do in this environment would be to get a Windows password. Um, typically you gotta wait about four minutes. I thought that would have been completed um, in time for that. I think that the uh, Zoom video conferencing system is taking over half of the world's cloud resources right now. <laughs> You're probably right, yeah. So yeah, so these, um, uh, uh, as you see, the nodes that I created earlier in this other cluster, I've got a four node cluster here, um, and I changed these on the fly as well. So these are these were running M58X large, I changed them to M524X large, so I can, I can boost the performance of this cluster without scaling the capacity. So we've got multiple options that we've got in when we scale this environment. As I say, we can we can choose to add more nodes to this. So I can change this from a four to a five node cluster or more, um, up to a hundred nodes supported. Um, or if I don't want to if I don't want to change the capacity of the cluster, I want to make it more performant. I've got options here of being able to change the instance type in here. To, to give me more performance. And how long does that take to actually roll out in? Um, so normally what we do, we can do it on a live cluster. So because we've got, with Erasure coding, we can protect against um, two drives or one node failing. We can actually down a node at a time in this environment while it's still active. Um, and just, uh, so stop, the, stop one of the nodes, right click, um, and then you've got an option in here that uh, gives you the option to change instance type when you've stopped it. Um, so it's all pretty quick, a couple of minutes to do each node, and then you've got a, a faster cluster running um, in, in the space of probably about five minutes. So I'm hoping... So this seems to be taking an order amount of time. Now normally when I've tested this out in the previously, the uh, as soon as my status check is live, pretty much so, I can get a Windows password off here. It does seem to be uh, rather slow. So um, going back to the cloud formation, looking at my stacks, I can see my S2 stack here. Um, if I look at the options of that, so the output file, this is where I get my temporary password. So what it does is when it generates the cluster, it gives me a temp, my first temporary password is is the, um, uh, the instance ID of the first node that it spins up. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's how we get the password to log into the environment. Okay, so um, we're gonna choose the uh, pen file. So these are my pen files. And that's the pen file I was using. I can get my password now to log into my environment. Now, typically, um, 
you've got two options of connecting into this environment. I can either go in directly with Teradici client, or what I tend to do to start with is that um, I, I load in uh, um, RDP. So what RDP does, which is really good, is it allows me to map local folders on here so I can, I can push some rushes up if I want to um, just to, into this environment. So connecting onto my client 18.132.15.3. We'd ask that people don't memorize these IP addresses and use them later on. So uh, as I say, connecting onto this this um, this client here, what I would typically do is redirect those folders to something from my desktop. It allows me then just to pull pull some video files in or something like that that I might want to use to edit in my Adobe Premiere environment. Um, the other option is obviously if you've got a Cumulo cluster on premise, one in the cloud, I can get a replication relationship going between the two because we've got a built-in replication product that will replicate from folder source to folder target to be able to move a lot of data in. So sort of the, the things that I would do in this environment now when I'm building it out would be to, to fire up an MMC, um, change my Windows password, because I can't, I don't want to keep having to copy and paste that really large password in. Um, so I would just pull in my users and computers. change my local password to something that I could remember. And obviously complied as well. So second thing I would tend to do in here now would be to uh, fire up server manager, just clean up my Clean up, clean up my um, Internet Explorer settings to some of the irritating things that we know that uh, some vendors tend to put on. And then um, I download Chrome. Um, our, the, our, the management of our system um, prefers Chrome as a, as a browser to, to connect onto. So so the next last thing I'm going to need to log into the cluster, as I say, is to go into the into the cloud formation, into my stack, and and get that temporary password to enable me to log on to the cluster. So just to be clear, and this is as slow as it would be to actually set one of these up. You're showing this from basic logging in with zero. So in yeah, from reality, in a um, you know, in an existing system that this would be significantly quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're building this from, from scratch. So what I'm looking for now is, is just a, a an IP address of, of one of those nodes. So, um, one, seven, two dot. so I can connect to any one of these nodes that I want to. 31.20.67. So this, this is the cluster that we built. This is the Cumulo cluster. Um, and the first thing I tend to do in here, as I say, is, is to do the same thing and, and, and change the password to something I can remember. So that's my password changed. So this is our dashboard. Um, it's got some really good stuff. I, I can show you this on, on our live cluster. I've got some, some data running through it to make it, um, so to, to make, you know, give me a bit more visual of, of what's going on in the cluster. So the first thing I do here is, is create myself a share. Just said about earlier, we were gonna create map a drive to this. So 
I might call it something like projects, give it a share name. And then in here I can do things like uh, set up access based enumeration, require SMB3 encryption. Um, for this test environment here, I'm just going to give everybody full control of this share. That share has now been created. Um, and then typically I'd come in here and map a drive. So how this would work in the real world is you'd set up something like DNS round robin, put a bunch of floating IP addresses on the cluster, which would use for load balancing clients in. But just for this environment here, I'm just going to connect to the static IPs that have been set up on each node, um, just to show you how simple it is just to connect into this environment with a with an SMB share. Okay, so now I've got an SMB share mapped. As I say, typically I'd redirect folders or, or copy data into here. My next step is going to be around things like, you know, setting up, installing Adobe Premiere on here um, to give me, a, a, you know, my, my editing software. So what I just want to do is jump out of this one and jump into the environment that I set up earlier. So I've got a client here. This is running Teradici client. So this is this is connecting on to um, editor one that you can see here in this environment. As I say I set this up earlier. Just, so to, just show to be you. clear, that Teradici client is on is on your local machine. We're not looking at remote desktop now. Yeah, no, this, yeah, this is on my local machine connecting in which is what we showed in that uh, the PowerPoint earlier. So rather than using um, RDP, which I was on this editor three, I'm now logged into editor one. So this environment now has got two Cumulo clusters running, two separate Cumulo clusters, uh, three editing machines in this environment, all in my London VPC environment. And I'm now using a Teradici client to log into this. Um, and this is the client here. Um, you can see that I've got um, a couple of this has got two clients mapped to it um, and this shows you some of the activity so I've, I've got running on here um, so I've got running on here um, this uh, a lot of you probably know it which is the, the the black magic disk test that I just used to to run run in this environment to, to generate some data here that you can see and it just shows you the great visibility so this is our dashboard so if I just make this a bit bigger, so um, our, our dashboard here gives you real time visibility of what's going on in my cl cluster at any particular point in time. My throughput read and write distribution that's happened over the last couple of hours shows you what my current throughput is and what it has been um, over a period of time. Client connectivity, you can see I've got both of them are connecting onto the same node. Uh, typically, I would distribute them across nodes. And I can see what my most active clients are doing as far as read writes, etc. Um, into the analytics section itself. This is the analytics I spoke about very quickly where we tag metadata in our file system. So we, we tag data about the data, but we also tag performance metrics as well. So we can see real time and we put that into a database sitting internally in our file system. We sample that database about every 10 to 15 seconds to give you visibility of what's going on. And this shows you exactly what's going on in each directory within the file system. That's the root of my file system. These are my hot clients and hot paths. And then it will show me real time what the throughput is or the IOPS. And we can select and deselect these depending on what we want to actually visibly see. I can also break this out by client as well, which we'll be looking at earlier. I can see what each client connected to as far as a directory is concerned what performance metrics they're pulling. So you can see real time what each client's doing. So when a client comes to you and says, you know, my, my client is running really slowly, what's going on? You can immediately see who's sucking the bandwidth in the environment, which client's doing what. Um, 
So it gives you some really good visibility. And the last thing I just want to show you, in, you know, trying to keep this fairly short, is obviously this. I've, I've already installed Adobe on here, um, and I've got a. Uh, uh, this is a um, one of our, um, our our reels that we tend to show at um, at uh, some of our environments. Um, so it just allows you to see a you know a typical um, editor in action. Can you just turn that down a little bit, Ian? It's gone a bit loud. Yeah, this just allows you to pull, um, as I say, pull. Uh, I've just, all I did was pull one of our our, our show reels into here, put, put, pointed it into the Adobe Premiere environment, and then it just allows you to be able to build, uh, uh, you know, and, and use your your Adobe as you normally would. Um, so that is, um, in a nutshell, building out my Cumulo cluster with an editor, uh, mapping an SMB drive to it, and then connecting into it using. RDP and also um, into well, via my Teradici software client. So in case people haven't come across that, I think it's just uh, make it clear. That means you can send home with an editor, um, you know, one of these zero footprint tiny PCs. The key with Teradici is that that link between you and the cloud is encrypted as well. So that means your editor at home is storing none of your data at home. They have no access um, to actually move the file um, outside of your organization system uh, so you have an end-to-end -end secure system and I think you know that's that's a lot of people's issues about working remotely uh, it's very difficult with some of the policies that exist uh, within certain media organizations and what we're finding with with this combination here is that the, you know the Teradici uh, products and, and, and the encryption that they put over and above um, the things that are their standard have really you know, past virtually every um, every customer's uh, infosec policy that I've come across. So, you know, it it, it is definitely um, interesting right now, but it's well worth taking a look at, at how Tiradici do it to, to see if that works for you too. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, thank you for that, Ian. Um, I know that we could talk for hours about this. The purpose of this um, right now is not to do that. Um, I haven't seen any open questions come up yet. Um, uh, so if there's anything that anyone wants to ask, please ask now. Uh, we'll wait a couple of seconds. Um, but we're happy to do this again. We're happy to do this slower, do it in one-on-one -on -one or, or with you and, uh, and your colleagues. Um, the great thing about this right now is that this product can be tested in the cloud. Um, we can run this up, it's available immediately. Uh, yes, Russell, Q&A is working. Um, so um, yes, we, we can do this immediately. Um, it can be spun up in very little time um, and, uh, and things can be tested and deployed. Um, I think uh, we've seen in the last week, you know, a huge demand from people just trying to work out you know how they're going to manage um, you know their uh, their systems and how they're going to manage to to keep work going um, and we're here to help uh, you know uh, and see if we can uh, get you going um, so um, in that case um, oh and another, uh, could we do a demo with my assets is the question so I'm guessing Ian that wouldn't be a problem at all uh, as long as we've got the cloud instances we could do that pretty easily uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, obviously, depending on what the assets are, but yes, we can. Uh, and we've done this with a couple of uh, customers remotely as well over the past couple of weeks, where we've um, we've done a remote Zoom Zoom session with them, um, jumped into their VPC and helped them build out their environment with with this exact thing. So um, four, six, eight, no cluster, running um, two or three editors. Um, and then they've built out from there after we've shown them the initial build out. Perfect, okay, thank you. Uh, another question for remote editing, are there any advantages in running a Teradici Zero client over software only? Um, I'm not 100% I'm not Teradici expert to be able to tell you the differences between the two. Um, I suppose the only thing would be is you've got more control over who you're sending a box to. Um, there is a higher cost for the zero client itself. Um, and I suppose the, the good thing about it is if, if you've got end users that don't necessarily have the hardware or the laptop, et cetera, at home, sending them a Teradici zero client with 
um, and when you program the zero client itself you program it to connect into a particular IP in that environment so you're controlling what they're actually connecting into so you, you set up all the certificates on it so if I've got an environment so you think about this environment I've built out but it might have say 50 editors in it and you're set your you buy 50 of those zero clients um, you can pre-program those zero clients to have the IP and credentials in them for for a, a particular editing machine. So that tends to be why people would use the, the you know the zero client above the software client. I think I there might also be some dual screen options with the zero client. Uh, I might be wrong. Yeah, yeah, I think there are ones that have got um, a couple of outputs on them, haven't they? So you can give them. But uh, if you've got your laptop at home, you could you could potentially use. Um, you know your typical splitter cables to give you multiple um, screens as well couldn't you yeah but um, yeah there's a lot of information out there about Teradici a lot of people are using it inside their products and don't realize it as well so um, it's it's worth uh, spending a little bit of time on and again if you want to talk to us please uh, let your account manager or if you can't uh, if you can't find them find find me and um, I will uh, I'll hook you up with the right people Great. Well, in that case, I think that's um, I think that's the last of the questions. Um, I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you all for coming, and uh, thank you, uh, Ian, for uh, presenting on the Cumulo side. We will be getting this out to you um, as a as a link um, to share um, uh, fairly soon afterwards. Um, so, all that remains to me is to say thank you once more, and please stay safe. Thanks very much. Thanks, Mark.